My name is Joe Dalton, entrepreneur and business coach. Welcome to Breakthrough Brands. Each week we bring you an inspirational story and an insight to the minds of some of the top business leaders, authors and mentors from around the globe. Whatever is needed to make you shine in life and business, you'll find it here. On this week's show, we have Donna Kennedy. Donna is a three-time best-selling author with the confidence to succeed being her most recent release. She's a qualified psychologist, life coach, business coach, and mentor. Her academic work has been published nationally and internationally by various faculties, including the American Journal of Psychology and the Irish Psychological Record. She has been endorsed by world-leading organizations and has worked with many personal development leaders, including Bob Proctor, from The Secret, Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup for the Soul, Brian Tracy, Sharon Lecter, Laurel Langenmeyer and Tony Robbins. If you wish to reach me about any of the topics covered in this episode or any other episode, you can get me on WhatsApp 086 821 0037 or email joe at jdc.e or follow me on LinkedIn under Joseph Dalton. I also need your help to spread the word. If you could please take two minutes to share, like or make a comment on this episode, I would be truly grateful. David, how are you? I'm very good, thanks, Joe. Really, really happy to be here. Doing my research, something that sparked in me. Do you know we both used to work for Canon? Indirectly, I used to sell photocopiers and their fax machines. I also worked in the fax department many years ago, so those that is so-called back in the day, I think, right? Looking at some of your stuff and a lot of your posts, I've been following you for a while. You're a sought-after guy, busy man. Well, that's the goal anyway. <laughs> that's the goal. You help companies, people, individuals make that right pitch. That's right. Actually, I started with startups. A lot of startups have to pitch in one minute, three minutes, five minutes, and uh, they have to pitch the whole business. So I started working out how to help startups do that and then took the tools and started applying them for companies as well and, uh, and for individuals. So it was originally you started off the idea of the elevator pitch for startups. Well, my company's called Best Three Minutes and that's because startups have to pitch in three minutes quite often. And a three minute pitch is actually a pretty good one because it's, you know, it's, it's short enough for it to, to not be too much detail, that people don't lose track. Um, but it's long enough to tell a bit. You know, you can tell a little bit of uh, what you're working on um, and you can communicate what kind of person you are, what kind of professional you are. Um, so that's that's the three minute pitch. And then I think of the handshake pitch, for example, that's a 30 second, you know, you're at a network event. Someone says, what do you do? And being able to communicate that in three or four short, sharp sentences, that's a platform for a, an engagement, a communication. I say when I'm doing some one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring with people, it's all about clarity, really getting that message. And you can talk about the three-minute pitch or the 30 seconds, but you could work on that for hours to get it right. Yeah, it's actually easy, easier to do a, a one-hour presentation than it is to create a three-minute pitch. It is, because it is. You can just expand, whereas three-minute pitch, you have to choose. Every single word is almost a choice. So it's, uh, yeah, it's challenging to make things shorter, but the fact is... Nobody's got more time. Nobody wants it more complex. Exactly what you say. People are looking for clarity and as quickly as possible. And where did it all start? Like, when did you decide to say, right, I want to get into this business. I want to help companies or people speak and be successful. Well, I, when I worked for Canon, I worked there for 16 years and I had a, a bit of a reputation for being good at presentation. And I left in 2009. And to be honest, it, a, a period of complete uncertainty followed. You know, I'd gone through the company very stable in Canon. Then I had five years where I did five jobs. I got fired from two of them. And those were firings that weren't like, hey, we're reorganizing. It was more like, hey, there's the door. Please use it. And, uh, you know, that was quite a, yeah. quite a shocker when I'd had that, this stable corporate career. And I was really at the stage where, like, what do I do next? And I wrote down seven things that I cared about. Uh, and one of them was presentation training. And I, 
I knew that was probably the thing that I would like to do best, but I wasn't sure if I could make a business out of it. But the thing that made the difference was that I started working with a startup company called Startup Bootcamp. And that was where I learned this very short, sharp pitch. And uh, for some reason, this combination of you know coaching, I love training people, I love coaching people, um, presentation, fascinated by the impact it has on people's lives and, uh, and their careers, and then making it short. This trio seemed to, to just fit. Like myself, I keynote now, and I love speaking. I do get up there and I make the people laugh, and I have them all writing and taking notes, and it's really fun when you get into it. For me, I think I'm just a little bit of a natural with it. People out there and say, oh, I'm terrified of speaking and I wouldn't be able to do that. And I'm shocked. So how do you get people to overcome that? Well, the first step, most of all, is preparation. You know, get, yeah. having a, a set of tools that helps you make, take a, a, a number of actions to make sure you're ready. And, uh, you know, I, I believe everybody can at least make a good professional pitch, a good professional presentation. But, uh, you know, it just takes a lot of work. And, and in order to do the right work, you just need the right tools. So that's what I've been looking for over the last five years is what helps people make a better pitch. Then the, the next thing is you can do all the preparation in the world, but if you're still scared or nervous, it can block you. So I've also researched and found you know, six or seven different things that people can do. And that's physical, actual things that you can do which can reduce your nerves and, and, and help you get back in control. Is that like a rabbit's foot in your pocket, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty physical. Um, no, it's, it's stuff like, for example, learning the first 60 seconds. You know, quite often we plan the, the first thing we're going to say, but actually we, we've planned the second thing we're going to say. The first thing is that you stand up and you think, hey, I should be a bit polite and say I'm happy to be here and blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's the bit that we don't plan. And that's the bit that can go wrong because the maximum, the moment of maximum uh, stress. So when you stand up, have a plan from the very first word. And, you know, if you make a 20 minute presentation, it doesn't mean you should memorize the whole thing. But definitely the first minute is the moments of highest stress. If this goes well, the rest of the presentation has a really high chance of succeeding. Um, and that 60 second nerve buster is... Yeah, it's the nearest thing to a, a silver bullet to solving uh, the nerves problem. It's, but there's loads of other things you can do as well. It's crazy, actually, because in the sales workshops that I run, I tell the sales guys, your first two opening lines are the most important when you go into a business. So before you even go into a business, what are you going to say? You need to have something that gets the person to go, hmm, tell me more. It has to be creating that curiosity and they want to know more. And it's crucial. Yeah. Those first two lines is, I'm sure you talk to people about presentation. They start off, you do an, a boring example, and there out comes the mobile phones in the audience. How disheartening is that to someone up speaking? Absolutely. Jeff Smith, uh, who is an international speaker, said to me, Joe, there's no such thing as a bad subject. It's just how it's delivered. Like accounting can be interesting if you have the right speaker. Yeah. No, I think the, the, the audience have two questions in their mind, either consciously or subconsciously. Firstly, is this person a professional? And do I want or need to know more? Yeah. And if you can trigger them in the first 20 seconds on these two questions, you know, being professional, having a plan from the first second, and then can you trigger their interest? Is there something that you can intrigue people with in the first 20 seconds? If you hit these two buttons, I, I think there's a great chance that they will increase the amount they listen over the rest of the pitch. David, when did you realize that you had a breakthrough? When did you kind of go, oh, I have something here? Yeah, it's funny because, you know, honestly, uh, we, we nearly went bankrupt, actually. We, we, we had a mortgage from a past uh, corporate life, which didn't fit our new life. We had a young family. I, I've, I've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old, so I started this business in between their birth. And uh, we were burning my wife's savings, which took her 20 years to build, uh, very, very fast. We burned 80% of it in two yeah, years. Happens. And uh, I can remember calling my wife one time and saying, I think we hit the U-turn. And I think it was really when um, I got, firstly, I got repeat customers. So customers who I'd served one year, they came back. And then secondly, uh, there were two people talking about me when I wasn't there. Then there were two people I didn't know. So somebody called me that I'd never met and said, I was recommended by this person and I'd never met that person either. And I think there, that's, that's a reflection of 
you're doing you're on the right track somehow you, you must be doing something that, that causes people to talk about the work that you're doing even when you're not there yeah good things that you're doing <laughs> yeah ideally good things good if it's things. bad things then you're out of business <laughs> how did you find those new clients you basically were reinventing yourself after a corporate career like how did you go out initially was it networking was it were you doing a lot on linkedin or how were you initially building up your reputation to get people to raise their hand of awareness it was all of the above yeah. really all of the above you know i started off doing free work you know i was in my 40 mid 40s and i was doing free work on a wednesday evening um for some kind of network group and half the people didn't turn up you know those kind of things were really normal in the early days and uh, I, I used LinkedIn I must say LinkedIn has been a real big plus for me in the, especially in the yeah. last few years uh, I got a lot of business through that um, I do think the key is to uh, share value you know and not always be looking for the buck but to be able to, to share stuff uh, sometimes for free uh, where you know you're just sharing online you're sharing a uh, short video, something that people can actually do something with so that you position yourself as I provide people tools. I give them things that they can actually do to improve their skills. And I think the more that you you kind of shift this pay line, the the better it is. It's a thin line because you don't want to give everything yeah, away. You, you can but, end up giving so, everything away. And, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I've, I do have a couple of free tools. I have a free app, for example. I have a thing called the Pitch Canvas. Um, you know, these are things which, of course, like people sign up for a, a mailing list. I'm rubbish at using my mailing list, but that's something else. But, uh, you know, 20, 30 people every day download my free tools. Um, the app's been downloaded, I think, 5,000 times or something. And that means that people are getting a, a new interaction with me when, you know, I'm not there. And uh, that, that increases the chance, I think, that they will think, hey, this, this could be a guy that can help us. We're just going to take a short break. Are you looking to boost your performance, motivate your sales team, have an all-round structure to your marketing? Get in touch with myself at Breakthrough Brands or contact me at joe at jdc.ie. In the research you've been doing, you talk about finding the right audience and delivering that right message. How do you pitch to the right people? How do you know that you're pitching to the right audience? You're now filling seminars. Your seminars are packed now. And you, is it your second book now that's coming out? Yes, yeah, second book on this Second subject. book, yeah. And what I like as well about you, David, you're honest. You're, you're telling that story, the reality where we've all been there. I think you and me, yeah. our stories are very, very similar. Sure. How do you tell guys, you kind of go, get that audience, and this is the message that you're delivering to them? Well, I think... Um it's it's a mixture so for startups there is kind of there is a framework to follow if you've got a small company and you you think you can scale then there are a lot of startup events startup pitches and so on i think for somebody who's starting out on their own um i can only talk about my own experience and what i see from other people and it's really you know hunting the the local meetups the relevant meetups in your area you know meetup.com that was the starting point for me yeah, i would go to places and I would just go and say, I'm a pitch coach. And I had, you know, honestly, I had very little skills or tools in the in the first six months that I could honestly say I was a pitch coach. But I would go there and talk about that and try to find out what kind of things that meant to people, whether people would be interested in that, what, what kind of people would be interested in it. And, uh, yeah, it's about just going out there and, and, and finding uh, groups of pe potentially interested people and constantly looking for what works. You know, you, you, if, if you're constantly looking to see, if you, if you mention a sentence about what you think it's all about and you can see that people get it, that's one that you can just keep repeating. But if you're getting that kind of, uh, what you're talking about kind of thing, yeah. then that's something to change or to try to find out why they don't get it. So I think it's, it's, it's a never ending task for somebody who's starting on their own is pitching face-to-face -face meetups, uh, doing stuff online, communicating value, these are the these are the ways to do it. And also with yourself, that you're living in Amsterdam, you travel all over the world, actually. Yeah. When you started, and a lot of people that I speak to when I'm doing the one-on-ones, you want to tackle the startups. And I sort of say, startups, a lot of startups don't have any money. Exactly. So you could be running after these guys thinking it's a business plan, and you, you end up 
talking and, and not realizing they they can they can't even pay you. And saying that, do you do one to ones or do you base your business on seminars or what's your workflow? Well, these days it's turned into uh, workshops and seminars, and uh, it's very rarely on one to ones. Um, in the early days, there was loads of one to ones, um, but that's because um, at that stage. To be honest, if someone said, will you do this? I said, yes. And uh, if it was roughly pitch coaching or even sometimes not pitch coaching, it was about business advice, I would just do it. And as I got uh, more sure of what I was doing, I started to analyze, okay, where's the money coming from? Where's the, what's the most efficient way to do this? I was also analyzing how many people can I access here? How many people can I help? You know, and if you can get 50 people in a room for a workshop, it's it, that's a lot of, of uh, people that you can help. And I've, I've, I've designed my workshops to work for, you know, 100 people, 200, 300 people in a room. And uh, so it means I can, I can access more people. I get the tools out there. And uh, one-to-ones is always a bit, you know, you, I like to help people in that way, but it just is limited and it's difficult to organize and so on. So, one-to-ones helps you work out what it is that people really need, but gradually building the business into seminars and workshops has really helped. Yeah, it's selling to the masses. Are you going to do something online? I'm building an academy right now, and I've got a, a live academy. Um, it's a simple subscription model, so it's actually a really cheap uh, monthly fee. And um, But I've got two courses on there at the moment, one about managing nerves, one about making a one-minute pitch. And I'm just building a third course, which is based on questions that I get. And I'm making short two or three minute movies of just talking on camera to answer those questions. And I'm getting questions from all around the world, actually, from Africa and New Zealand and as well as the Netherlands. It's, uh, it's, so, it's... yeah, I'm starting to build that online, but I've been focusing on the book recently and uh, the online thing is the next, uh, the next big thing. What advice would you give? Someone calls you and say, look, I'm having a problem. I'm trying to get a message. What was the, what's the three tips that you would give someone? Yeah, the first thing is to uh, take one step back and think, who's the audience? What's the objective? So what are they interested in? And what, is, what, are, what do I really want these people to do? Do I want them to think differently? Or is there some action I want these people to take? Um, so that's the, that's the first step. The second thing is not get caught up into making presentations in PowerPoint. I recommend people to use post-it notes to get the story out of their head and start to organize their thoughts before they start creating a presentation. So be able to tell that story verbally uh, without any presentation, ideally. And then when you're in the phase of, okay, let's sit down around a table and present, um, don't get caught up in the PowerPoint stuff. Just work on getting the story straight. Then the third thing I recommend is strong open, strong close. Yeah. So that there's, like we discussed, you know, the first 20 seconds, that really matters. And the last 30 seconds is also the, la- the first thing they will remember uh, about you as a professional and you as a business. So getting it really clear on, uh, uh, on, on that opening and the closing, that, that really makes a difference, actually. Having a plan for both those really bookends the whole pitch. I always try and bring in some sort of reality humor into my own talk. I walk the people through a story, sales and marketing, and then at the end I have, you know, a three-line thank you. I know you're in a hurry. You have another meeting coming up. Give us your details where people can log in and find all your information. Yeah, it's uh, best3minutes.com. So that's best, then number, three, and minutes.com. And uh, that's the, the starting point. And they can find you on LinkedIn as well. They can also find me on LinkedIn, so just look for David Beckett. It's actually David Beckett Presentation Coach. And my book is called Pitch to Win, and uh, it's everything I've learned in the last five years packaged in a book, all the tools that work for anybody to pitch their idea. I've left all the stuff that doesn't work out and finally just condensed it down to everything that I know works that helps people shine in their pitches. And that's on Amazon, is it? Uh, it's on Amazon as an ebook now. The print version will be available any minute. Brilliant. And uh, it's, as I say, called Pitch to Win. Pitch you. And tell me, what's the best business advice you'd offer somebody? Best business advice is get engaged with customers. Just don't be afraid to talk to customers, even if you don't have a finished product. Find out what it is that they're looking for and build it as you're talking to customers. 
and uh, you have a much better chance of really creating something that they actually need and that they value. Best business book you'd recommend? Apart from my own. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think the best business book I've read is by a guy called Ryan Holiday. It's called The Obstacle is the Way, and it's all about overcoming uh, difficulties. It's about how you address difficulties. And, you know, there's a lot of cliches about you should have to fail and so on. But he really talked about practically how do you deal with it when you've hit a brick wall? And, and that book is uh, fabulous. It's called, it's, as I say, it's Ryan Holiday, and it's called The Obstacle is the Way. Before you go, give us a sure. song we'll play out with. Well, I'm very tempted to say something really cheesy like Rocky, but uh, actually there's a song by Robbie Williams. It's called Time on Earth. The Robbie line in Williams. there that says, I'm going to walk onto that stage like it's my destiny. Brilliant, brilliant. And, uh, it's about 45 seconds into the song, so that, that would be the bit that if you're going to play it out, that would be what I would recommend. It's called Time on Earth. I'm delighted that we eventually got to speak. Unfortunately, it is short. Maybe we can do this again in a year or so. Love to do that. David? Thank you for coming on to Break Two Brands and I shall chat to you Thanks. soon. Take care. Delighted to be here. Thanks a lot. And I just want to let everyone know I'm running a sales workshop on the 19th of June in the Talbot Hotel on Stalogan Road. So if anyone is interested in learning a sales process to close more sales, please get in touch with me at joe at jdc.ie. Until next week, from myself, Joe Dalton at Break Two Brands, you have a super day and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. You and I know we can always do better. Breakthrough Brands Sales Acceleration Specialists, helping companies reach peak performance by introducing a marketing strategy to build a better prospect pipeline. Develop your leadership and sales skills with Breakthrough Brands Custom Sales Training Development. Go to Breakthrough Brands at www.jdc.ie or click the link on this page to see if Breakthrough Brands and you can work together. Great companies build a great relationship with their clients. Sales and marketing starts with a story. Let us help you with yours. Breakthrough Brands.